That's it. Isn't it better when you stop for a second and you actually listen? See, you're so good at taking orders that I forgot that you still have some morals, pasky as they may be, in there. Don't you realize it, honey? You're no better than me. And the more you try and distinct us, the more you try and distinguish yourself away from me. Shut up. <laughs> You're so cute when you reel away. When I shove you into a wall, or I pick you up like you weigh nothing. Does it make you feel helpless? Maybe a little bit hopeless while I'm at it. <laughs> doll, it's so fun to play with you. But all my previous dolls broke. What makes you so good at not? I've wondered that since the day we've met, because nothing ever made any sense with you. From heads or tails, it didn't matter. Chance, fate, or just a game of brutality. You always manage to survive. Did I say you could talk? Aw, oh, I'm not being that harsh. It was a joke. Aren't most characterized by their actions? And as it would be, some villains are comically evil and some heroes comically good. And because of that, I've realized it's so moronic to even worry about what people perceive you as. Sure, society functions on that, doesn't it? Be it with our endless opinions that we only share because if we shared how we really felt, oh, then we'd be a bad person, right? You and I are no goddamn different. <laughs> Doll, you try and act like you're such an innocent angel, but why don't you be honest for once in your fucking life? Why don't you actually say what you like, what you actually believe? Because your actions, they're speaking louder. <laughs> Can't you see, Doll? I'm just someone who's more honest than the rest of them. And honesty should be praised if you don't actually believe in something, but you believe in it because you think if you don't, you'll be ostracized, shoved into the pits of society, seem as a deranged and twisted individual that everybody can judge freely. The difference between you and I is I don't hide who I really am. You, doll, need to be more honest with yourself. Or are you going to try and run that bullshit past me? <laughs> Doll. Don't make me repeat myself. It's taxing to run it back like that, isn't it? And you continue on this facade that you wear of masks and punity, but for what? What do you gain from it? Tell me how a hero like you doesn't feel bad when things like this are being said about you. You only fake it. You fake that it disturbs or bothers you. You pretend because you've been conditioned to care, right? They reamed you into the ground. They tore you up more than I ever have. And all you did was try your best. Is that the reward for heroes? To try and fail and only get reamed again and again, cut down by the very people you protect, criticized endlessly for what? What is the purpose of your existence? Have you ever really asked yourself that, doll? Well, I did. As you may or may not know, 
I'm not a caricature of villainy. Nothing of the sort. In fact, I am one of the most honest people you'll ever meet. Lies are pointless if you know both sides in the game. It's sort of like lying as a habit. Some people develop it, but only when they're weak. When they develop it to show off what they don't have. Or better yet, hide what they do. Don't you get it, doll? This is an intervention. I'm here to teach you that you don't have to cave into them anymore. You're a fallen hero, whether you admit it or not. I just came when you were at your rock bottom. And what's more, what's most interesting to me is that you came here of your own accord. I didn't force any of this upon you, and I never would. Only a scoundrel, a caricature, a villainy, someone who has no care for life would do something so cruel, so twisted. I may be some of those words, but I'm offering you a chance to still do good in the world, even if it's not by those corrupt and always condescending heroes, to get even with those voices that endlessly tear you down, accuse you of things that you didn't do, and make you out to be worse than me. Isn't that just the irony? I've killed before. I've taken lives even of innocent people, and I won't ask for forgiveness for it. Because what I'm doing is for the greater good. Those caught in the flack of the shotgun blast right to the face of society. If that's what it takes, then that's what I am. A thorn in their side to take down this fake semblance of justice. I've told you before, and last time we met like this, I explain to you why they're fake. When the symbol of justice, the one who saved me, betrayed me at the simple little mistake of blowing someone up, using my power too much, the villain getting splattered across the glass and everyone looks at me, suddenly I'm the villain. So all I did was make their story true. <laughs> Isn't it funny how things work out in the end? A self-fulfilling prophecy. They wanted so bad to villainize me that it happened. That I gave them exactly what they wanted. Because I'm not going to be a pawn to a society that only values me when I make a difference in their lives. They don't care about us. You're no different than me. And I don't want to recruit you to this villainous society because we're villains, but because we have the guts to change society. And I have the plan to bring it all down. Not the aimlessness of Tomura, who I destroyed. No, not the pride of all for one. Not the endless selfishness of the Paranormal Liberation Front. No, I wish to make a new kind of villain. A villain like the ones of old that steals from the society that broke us. That takes it all down to the ground, but not without a plan to build it back up in a much better way where people without quirks can live and be seen as equals, where people who have quirks have responsibilities that they can fulfill. A society that's not so fragile as the ego of social media, which likes to babble on about who's right and wrong. Do you know how many times I saw friends turn into enemies, stab me in the back just to laugh about it the next day? I've seen it, and all, you'll see it too. 
I just caught you the moment before it starts. The harrowing day before the nightfall. The moonlit chaos that happens behind the face of anonymity. They see you as an object that must be perfect, yet when you're perfect, you get no praise, yet the slightest mistake, and they tear you down until there's nothing left, down to the bone, not even flesh left. You'll just be a husk, waiting for them to chew you up and spit you out. And if it was only social opinion, it would be pointless. That's not what this is about. It's not about people endlessly chasing after ghosts or even ones that are chasing after actual, dangerous, corrupt, anything like that. It's the society, the very foundation, the bricks of which we stand on are broken. They do not stand for justice. Just as All Might, who turned his back on me, is nothing more than a pawn to them. I see him as a pitiful enemy, not because I didn't appreciate him, or that I didn't understand his belief in me, but I understand it more than ever now. When even he looked at me like that, there was no going back. I still wanted to be the symbol of something greater. I wanted to do what I never had the... what I never had the ability to. Now it's different. Now I'm laser focused. I lost my composure. Several times I did. And a villain may always be labeled that, but I picked that label to hail under because it's not the villainy that's the problem with the world. It's the false heroism. It's the complacency that someone could be tortured, destroyed, driven to such lengths as all of these, each and every one of them, Read it yourself, every single one of them, without fail, was treated much like you. And while I managed to save a select few, many of them disappeared. You can see this as a revenge against the society that has treated us poorly as monsters because heroes that kill aren't heroes anymore. That's such a false narrative. Something that never made sense to me. To take the life of someone who would have taken the life of thousands more. Why? Why would I let him live? Why did everyone look at me like I was a monster when all I did was protect him? They're all messed up in the head. And I tried to give them a chance. I came to each one individually. And what did they do? They called me a madman. They said I'm not the Deku that they knew. That I'm no longer Izuku Midoriya, no. That I'm just a filthy villain. And they called for backup instead of saying, hey, it's been a while that they believed in me. And no, had one of them said they believed in me, even a little bit, maybe I wouldn't be so sure in my conviction, but I understand it now. It's not that I hate them. I don't. I don't hate anyone. Hatred is a wasted emotion. Don't you think, though? It's not something worth bothering when you're trying to accomplish something big. And sure, there's plenty of people who use it as their rhetoric. Pathetic people. Heroes do it all the time. And villains, too. 
What I am falls under the ladder. But my purpose isn't just to sow discourse, to take some revenge for the sake of revenge, no. Changing this twisted world, sometimes you can't fix it from within. Sometimes there isn't a band-aid to put over every wound. Sometimes you have to reattach the limbs or rip out the heart. That's the problem. I am the figurative heart transplant that this society needs. Now, I understand while you could look at me as being some kind of dictator or oppressor, I'm not. I come hailing an olive branch, but also a blade, here to reap as well as save as much as I can to destroy and uproot the weeds that pollute this society. The very foundation built upon prejudice that quirkless were not seen as human. Secondhand citizens, as with all great movements in history, there can only be equality. As for what that entitles, I'll get into more details later. Now, doll, are you in or out? <laughs> You're so honest, and I love that. That's why, in these trying times for you, I thought it only proper to come bearing gifts. See, right here, these two fellas are the ones, the root cause of your pain. Jealous, cynical, sadistic. You decide. And regardless of their fate, in that puny little room, you can condemn them however you want. You can make them beg for mercy or you can offer them forgiveness. I won't judge you no matter what you do to them. The only difference is I offer you the choice that you never had to pull the trigger on those who anonymously destroyed your life and uprooted it based upon falsifications. You have the right every right to their lives. If you're willing to take someone else's, drive them to the point where everyone hates them, then you too should be willing to accept it, right? Consequences for their actions. I couldn't have said it better myself. Then, We'll just have to make them feel those consequences. And I'm aware, doll, of our precarious relationship before this. I know I pretended to be someone I'm not. For months, we've been together as a couple. Now that I'm revealing everything, you have every right to break up with me. To tell me I'm nothing more than a scammer. Take my gifts I've given you and walk away. Truth be told, the only thing I hate more than liars and cheats and the people that don't believe in their friends are those who offer gifts or good intentions with strings attached. I will never be that kind of leader, but I ask that you follow me nonetheless, whether as my lover or as my companion. I leave that choice firmly in your hands without tampering with it. And doll, for as brutal and dangerous as I am, I have never lied to you other than about my identity. 
And that leads us to this. Where do you stand, doll? With me. Or by yourself against the residual, the hatred, the endless berating. I don't want that for you. And hell, even if you turn away from me, I can at least offer you a place to stay where they can't find you. God knows what they're planning, but... <laughs> Dull, you have such an eloquent way of saying it. But if I must answer now, of course I'd say I do. Do you think I'm such a flippulent individual that I would ever turn on you? <laughs> I'd have to be a fool to turn away from someone as heartfelt, honest, and gorgeous as you. I fell in love with you. Truthfully, that day, sure. Maybe you didn't know my past, but now that you do, is it any different than before? When you look at me, I don't see disgust in your eyes. I don't feel like I'm being judged unfairly. I feel like you genuinely see me as myself, and that, that by itself means more than I can explain. But the rest of it, devil in the details is I I don't want to be alone I've lost everyone once and I don't want to see it happen again the last thing I want is more innocence caught in the crossfire when I lost my mom I I had to do it my father was responsible and I had to take him out. You'd think it would leave big mental scars and maybe it did. But I'm still me. Through all the trauma, through all the pain and further understanding of the world, I'm still me. And I'm saying... I genuinely care about you. I know I disappeared once, but only to protect you. The accusations of you being in line with villains. It's all my fault. Even if I'd like to deny it, I can't. I was sloppy once, and all of this spiraled out of, out of control. I understand if you hate me for it, but I still love you. Sorry, doll. Oh, it's just when it's you. I can't stop, even if I tried. <laughs> Are you sure this is where you want to be? <sighs> Fine, doll. Don't regret that choice. Never do. Promise. Just like we used to. I swear, for as deranged as people make me out to be, I'm still Deku. Just... I realized a lot of things, lost and gained things, and I want you to be in the latter category. <laughs> you mean it, doll? That makes me so happy, because I... I 
just never get enough of you. And in truth, I got so scared there. <laughs> I love you. Doll. Oh, my doll. How badly I've wanted to embrace you. This month or so, we've been away. I promise you I was just handling things. Protecting you. I couldn't be without you. But I had to accept... That it was a real possibility. That the love was one-sided. That I couldn't be with you forever. No matter how much it hurt. I had to accept it was your choice to make, not mine. I know I'm twisted. I know that I have a sense of justice, or lack thereof, <laughs> that is on the level of someone dangerous, much beyond mere charisma or power, it's ambition. That's what corrupts people, but I won't be that way. I won't be. I won't let it corrupt me. I'm here, doll. <laughs> here to make all your dreams come true. <laughs> doll, you... <laughs> doll, I... can't ever stop when it's you. I'm way too lost. In your touch, in your eyes, and your everything. You're the one who never gave up on me. The one who didn't see me as a monster those years ago. You always fought for me. Even when everyone condemned me. That's why you were so special. One of the many, many, many reasons, though. I was trying to sound tough about the other broken dolls, but in truth, I guess I was making excuses. I don't want to break you, and I only broke others because I had to. You believe me, don't you? I tried to let them live, I did. So badly, I... <laughs> Don't stop, though. If you want me to be that way, I'll be anything. Anything that will make you happy. I... I love you, doll. You've saved me so many times, and I want to save you now. I want to save you and mean it. I love you, doll. You... Oh, can I be with you forever? Can I? <sighs> I'd say getting carried away is an unfortunate habit of mine. But to call it misfortune would be an understatement instead. It's a catastrophe. 
and one I'd begrudgingly love to infatuate you with further, doll. <laughs> Be mine. Let me elaborate. 